Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, uh, we've got another video for you that's uh, basically just a video blog following me around on uh, how to solve problems around the ship. If you guys watched our 20 minute video on changing a light bulb, this video tells you what to do when you change that light bulb and it doesn't solve the problem. We are currently between turrets one and two in the various magazine spaces that feeds them. So this is the annular space outside of turret two. Um, the camera is sitting in one of the turret two magazines and this door leads to turret one magazine. That leads to the number three pump room, which is where the, the uh, ship's speed log indicator is that I always call the pit sword. And it's also an access point to the uh, catacombs under the ship that connect turret one and two and forward diesel and have all the wiring for it. And we, we've made videos about all these various topics. Check out the description below for uh, links to those. So uh, we had some lights in these spaces that were blinking. So sometimes that means a bad ballast or a bad bulb in these old fluorescent tubes. Uh, however, we came down, we looked at them and they're, they've been, they're some of the ones that have been changed over to LEDs. Uh, around 2,500 of our light fixtures have been changed over to LEDs, uh, including most of the ones on the tour route, and this is on the turret two tour, so uh, they had in fact been changed over. It was really freaking weird because it was every other light that was having issues. I'm like, if a group of lights together have issues, it's definitely a fuse. If it's a single light has issues, it's definitely a bulb or a starter. If it's every other bulb, what the heck is going on there? Uh, so, not being able to solve the problem, I went to uh, the gentleman who is our current volunteer of the month in January 2022, and he uh, worked as an electrician his entire career. And prior to that, he served in the Navy and he was an electrician on a couple of ships, including the old gearing class destroyer, Bassalone. Uh, and I love electricians who are shipboard electricians because a shipboard wiring system is completely different from your wiring system at home. A regular electrician, if I call their contractor, they come in and they look at the problem, they scratch their head and it doesn't make any sense to them because shipboard wiring is so completely different from normal landside wiring. And the main difference is your home is grounded. Ships don't have anything to ground to. Uh, so there are no grounds in the majority of the systems on the ship. And uh, whereas your shipboard electrical wires and stuff are gonna be in conduits that you can't access on the ship, they're all sitting right there with tags on them and everything so that if there is a problem, you can trace it out. Um, and so Rich, uh, my volunteer electrician, comes down and the two of us start tackling this blinking light problem. So um, a blinking light, typically with LEDs, means that there is a phase out. Ships get 440 power, that's what they make or get from shore power, uh, and that's a three phase system. So each of the 120 volt systems has two of those three phases feeding power into it. Uh, and so they tend to have two fuses. Uh, and they're either A, B, or C from one of those three phases. So um, a blinking light means it's not getting full power. An old fluorescent fixture might just be much dimmer than it should be at 60 volts. Uh, it can still come on somewhat, but an LED fixture needs 120 volts. At 60 volts, it's just not working. So um, it's got enough power, it'll kick on and then it'll kick off, kick on, kick off, and that's why they were blinking. Uh, it did not answer the question of why it was every other one. So we came over to the lighting box here uh, and we were able to see some of these are labeled as lights ports, lights starboard, lights on this deck, lights on that deck, and some of them are labeled as emergency lights. Uh, and it turned out it was one of the emergency light circuits that was blinking. And that's why it was alternating. If the ship loses power, 
we've got an emergency diesel generator on board. However, that is nowhere near the power generating capacity of the entire ship. So down here where we're deep in the ship, there's no portholes, there's no other light or emergency lights uh, except a couple of battle lanterns. If we lose our main power, all the lights don't come on. Only a fraction of them are on the emergency circuit. And so that's why it was every other one that was out and every other one was in a regular lighting circuit. So, okay, that solves one problem for us. And we're able to go back to the box here. And if you turn off the master switch, it kills all the lights. You unbolt this and open it up and then you've got your fuses two for each switch. We were able to use a multimeter to test and see where we didn't have 120 volts on both sides of a fuse. It meant that the fuse had blown. But the problem wasn't here. All these fuses were fine, which meant the problem came from somewhere up the line. Fortunately, most of the boxes still have their old Bakelite tags on them that tell you where they're fed from. This is two FE-107. So now we just have to find the feeder for 2107. Uh, and we can follow because many of the wires still have tags on them, like this one that says 2FE-1017. Uh, so we can chip the paint off of these and then follow that wire around in its bundles. Uh, that wasn't working for us. There, there's too many wires down here and uh, we couldn't tell where this was going. So we went to the source. Uh, we went to engine room one, which we thought might provide the power for here. And we did find the electrical power for the main lights on the circuit, but not the emergencies. And that all seemed to be working fine. So we went to the forward diesel generator room and we found the circuit for the emergencies and that was all fine. Uh, and again, the bundle of wires coming out, we couldn't trace it from that end either. So we knew there was a problem somewhere in between. And it's very common for uh, switch boxes like this to have a larger feeder panel that feeds a couple of the switch boxes. And then that itself is fed from an engine room, a diesel generator room, wherever the power is coming from. Uh, so at this point, we're completely lost. We, there are boxes like this all over the ship. We got no idea which one feeds this. And the ship had so many modifications over the years, it doesn't necessarily make sense. The box isn't always on the same deck or in the same location. Sometimes they wired in wherever they had a spare circuit and it ends up being on the other end of the darn ship. Uh, but we got lucky. Come over this way. So now we're in uh, the powder handling level of turret two, the lowest level. We're, we're still on fifth deck. Um, Rich and I spent a tremendous amount of time up on third deck where there's a ton of wiring boxes looking around trying to find the one that fed into the turret. Uh, and we just couldn't find it. But Libby saw this plate here, electrical booth number two, which is down one deck below us here. Uh, so we went down there to see, hey, maybe does that electrical booth power the lights here? And we know that all the power for the big motors up in the turrets comes from the diesel generator room through the catacombs into that space. And there's this big spider web looking thing of, of huge uh, cables running up the trunk in the center of the turret. But that doesn't mean that the 110 lights and emergency lighting circuits are down there. Uh, but we decided to look anyway. So uh, this whole railing around this was added when we opened Turret 2 up as a tour. This isn't part of the uh, original layout of the space. So uh, we got the hatch there. It's not one of the armored hatches. If you want to see us lift one of the counterweighted armored hatches, there's a link to that video in the description below. Forgive us, that's a real old one. The sound might not be that great. So, we come to this world's jankiest ladder. But that doesn't daunt us. I have no idea what they grabbed onto before we installed this stairwell here, because there's no grab bar or anything 
at the top. So we come down here to the electrical booth and sure enough, there's all of the boxes, the fuse boxes that uh, have power coming into them and then lines going out for the various lighting boxes around the ship. So at that point, it was a simple matter of finding the right one with the right tag and checking those fuses and it turns out that this is the one that had blown. You know, in a perfect world, it's the fuse at the switch box that blows and then this one's a little bit bigger because it's feeding more and that one's a little bit bigger uh, down the line and so on and so forth. But, you know, sometimes we get these situations where these fuses are pretty old. Um, the surge happens down the line here and that's where the fuse fails and you got to trace it out. Uh, so that's not interesting. We've changed fuses before. Um, if you don't know what a fuse looks like, it's this. You use a special pair of pliers that are not made out of metal. They're called fuse pullers. And you put it in, it's got a pair of brackets here and here, and uh, that clips the fuse in place. The fuse inside is basically just a thin metal strip. That metal strip is supposed to be very conductive with no resistance. So when it's working right, the electricity is coming into the box, it's going through the fuse, and it's going out of the box to the light panel or whatever. Uh, but if too much power, too many amps of power go through this, and this particular one is a 15 amp fuse, uh, if more than 15 amps go through it, it melts through that metal strip and then there is a gap. It opens the circuit so power comes in, but it no longer goes out. And that means that if something gets damaged, we're struck by lightning or whatever the case is, um, that surge is not gonna go through this whole system and then blow out light bulbs and electrocute you when you hit a light switch or whatever the case may be. Um, so simply because we're down here, I'll show you what that looks like. Otherwise it's not too interesting. Notice the various circuits are labeled A, B, or C for the various legs of power. Notice one of these circuits is open, it's unused. If we look at the cover of the box, there's no tag there because it's an open circuit. The other ones feeding lighting fixtures have their fuses in them. Piece of cake. That's not what's interesting. The interesting thing down here is this guy. This is an ABT, an automatic bus transfer. And this particular one, you can tell, is a lot newer. This is an 80s addition to the ship. Uh, and you can see it's, it's mounted on these unpainted panels. So it's uh, a relatively late addition in the ship. It's got a couple of switches. There's a test switch here. This is labeled ship and emergency. And then you've got a manual and an auto here. This is set to auto. So what this does and why this is wired into the box between where power is coming in and where the um, lighting panel is, is if something happens and we lose main power, the diesel generator automatically kicks on if it's set up to. Uh, and will automatically power the emergency circuits. So with this set to auto, when it stops sensing power, it will kick power receiving from ship to emergency diesel. So that would then light enough of the lighting systems around here that the guys could see what they're doing and work on solving the issue there. Uh, so let's just open this up so you can see the inside. Uh, again, it's going to be in pretty good shape because it's from the 80s. But yeah, so here's all your stuff, your, your switch down here and the contactors to tell it what to do. And uh, yeah, no, I just thought this was a really cool addition to the ship. Uh, the ship always had emergency diesel generators. Uh, and I'm honestly not sure if there was an older style of ABT that was used during World War II, or if when we lost power, they had to bring on the diesel generator and then bring on the various lights that were attached to it individually. However, when they switch from the incandescent bulbs to the fluorescent tubes in the 1980s, they add the ABTs that we have now that can just switch on automatically if they're set to auto. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, another one of those redundant features that I love to hammer on, uh, and this is new information to me. So I hope you enjoyed this problem solving journey. Uh, being a curator of a museum ship 
means that you end up doing a lot of plumbing and electrical and painting and uh, metalworking and stuff like that. And honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way. What's your favorite redundant feature of the battleship? What's something that's redundant that you never thought about before? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support you've given us. There's a link in the description below for more ways you can uh, donate to support. Uh, you can also help the museum out by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our channel and our museum. Thanks for watching.